after the break to meet Casey Stewart, a blogger who's found a way to live a life she loves and get paid to do it. I was really motivated that I wanted to get a job in media and a position came up at CTV to be the social media person for Much MTV and much more and right from the start I told him I was like that's my job. There are millions of bloggers in the world and hey you're probably one of them but what makes a blogger stand out? Well look no further than Casey Stewart. Casey is a brand ambassador and lifestyle blogger blogging about her fabulous life at CaseyStewart.com and people love it. It all started back in 2006. She used to work for one of Canada's largest media companies, but it struck out on her own. And since then, she's been blogging about her life and actually getting paid for it. So we had the chance to sit down with her and find out how it all started. Hey, I'm Tyson from the American Rejects, and uh, you're on CaseyStewart.com. If you could bottle Casey's energy, you could probably power her around for the next 10 years. When I was really young, they said, Casey, you're like effervescent. You walk into the room and all of a sudden all the lights go on and the papers go flying. Tell us about the process of creating Casey Stewart, This Is My Life. I started in 2005. I was my first job, uh, fashion job, right out of university, just moved to Toronto. And I came across Blogger, and I had always had an interest in publishing and writing. And I have a really bad memory. My friends used to always be like, how do you not remember? And so I thought, okay, I'm going to start documenting my life. I called it Casey Stewart, This Is My Life, and right from day one. And I started, started drawing like CG cartoons, which is really funny. Hi. Hey, are you like that blog girl? The one from the internet, Cassie? My name is Casey, not Cassie. Oh, cause I like totally thought it was Cassie. Ugh, no. It's Casey. Like Casey at the bat. I have an art site called Borderline Artistic where I would draw cartoons. That's where they live now. Um, and then, so I just, I was sort of not a regular blogger, but I was really into the, the idea that I could create and publish my own content anytime I want for free. And in 2008, I started to take it more seriously, and I've been blogging every day since. I met Casey uh, back when she was uh, working in PR and she just had the personality, no, I wouldn't say the personal brand yet, and it was so interesting to see her like take up blogging, take up uh, Twitter, but she added such a flair to it, and, and she really built her own brand, and it's been interesting to see her become this whole persona of herself, and how she can bring her own audience. So what's that process been like, like the evolution where you started and how you got to where you are today, you're getting paid to do it, what's that been yeah, like? Yeah, um, it's been a really cool process as it's grown. In 2008 when I had started, I was blogging every day, I was on Twitter, Twitter had not become really into mainstream yet, no one even had a million followers back then, this is like Twitter history. I started sharing on Pinterest, making all these boards and all these people started liking stuff and I was like, ooh, this is fun. And then I started doing it more and then I'd stay, late, stay up late at night and I'd be like, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Penny, thanks for three hours. I blogged for a year while I worked at this um, IT, a software company, um, and after about a year, they caught on that I was blogging every day. I took off the date stamps on my posts because I didn't want it to be you know, they just said you can't do that at work. So even if I was on break or something, it was just one of those things. The internet's very public, so if you're tweeting and blogging at work and it's not part of your job and you're not done your work, that's the first place that someone's going to turn and be like, hey, you're not working. So I was really motivated that I wanted to get a job in media. And a position came up at CTV to be the social media person for Much MTV and much more. And right from the start, I told them, I was like, that's my job. And I got it. I left that company and I was like, you don't want me to tweet? I'm going to tweet professionally. That was my dream job. What kid in Canada doesn't want to work for much music? So I went there and I was there for about a year and I kind of hit that turning point where I started to get a lot more interest. My traffic had gone up and I got asked to do my first spokesperson contract. It was clear that my interest lied more in building my own brand than building you know, the CTV, that their brand, which is okay because they were pretty supportive in what I was doing. And then I got invited on my first international blogging gig to New Zealand Fashion Week with about 10 or 15 other bloggers from around the world. And I really got to see that 
there's people that are doing this. It's real. Like my dream of being this international blog star person was a reality. And if I worked really hard, I could achieve it. And my goals have always been marketing and international business. My family is from New Zealand, so I've really grown up with no barriers to where you can go. You know, kind of looking at the world as like, okay, if I want to go somewhere, I can just go there. And that's how I want to build my brand. I've started doing a lot more international things in the last year or so, and I really want to pursue more of that this year. So international business and marketing, I can actually say I'm really doing what I took in school. Can you tell us about Gen Y TO? Gen YTO was started in January 2009 by me and four other friends of mine. There was a lot of talk in the media about how Gen Y was a really needy, me, me, me generation, ungrateful, not hardworking, and we all got together and we were like, this is not the case. This is not the case at all. We knew so many young, smart people that, you know, they're the brains that are coming into these new companies. They're the new media. They're the people fresh out of school that they want to hire who have the skills that are going to be what carry companies, you know, through the recession and through all that stuff. So we created this organization, Gen YTO, which stands for Generation Y Toronto. And we wanted to bring together the PR, tech, startup community, anyone who is young and interested in making the world a better place. <laughs> Uh, Casey used to work for Much Music and uh, I think that um, she moved on and she's just telling it. Uh, Casey's a very smart businesswoman. She's, uh, she's fun, she's energetic. Uh, lots of respect for her as a fellow blogger. There's so many blogs out there. How do you stand out and why do you think people are following you? I think what makes me stand out is probably my attitude. Um, I'm very positive. If you read me, there's always like lots of pictures of me in the sunshine and sometimes my blog is like, today I went for a bike ride. And that may seem kind of like a bit silly to some people, but I could write a whole blog post about something really simple and make it seem really exciting because I'm really excited about life and positive and really trying to instill those values in other people. I only write about, talk about, and do things that I actually really like doing. But that ranges from a charity event, to a party with an open bar, to a fashion show, to traveling somewhere really cool. And that stuff's all part of me, and I'm really enthusiastic about it. Today in the mailbag. Whoa, I gotta connect. One thing that she always does, whatever she is doing, is, is authenticity. She's really real with her audience and with people who follow her, and I think that goes a long way. I don't think Casey's changed herself. She's just been very good at leveraging um, the platforms to build out the personality that she always had. She's been very tactical, uh, very thoughtful about it, and um, she's got a lot of wisdom in how she did it, but she's still the same Casey. She just got smarter with it, I think. <laughs> That's why a lot of people follow me because I like I always get things first. I get to know things first. PR companies that me stuff. So when I can get that news and I'm sharing it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Today in the mailbag, I got a new suitcase from Remoa, which is a German luggage company. This one is the sexier version of that other suitcase that I had last time. It has front pockets. Sexy. Okay, well, it's going to come with me next week to Detroit and then to Vegas. Hello. I love traveling. Thanks. Bye. The end. Have a nice day. What do you say to people who are really cynical or don't believe that you're actually making a living off of doing what you're doing? I just tell them to read my blog. I'm like, eat it. <laughs> Because, you know, I work really hard. It's like, I've, it seems maybe like I have this joy-free life, but I, to have a blog means you spend a lot of time at home on the computer by yourself. Like, I'm not always gallivanting around town and with, in a, with a driver and, you know, things like that. You know, I, I do spend a lot of Friday nights alone at home like this with my glasses on. Hey, Virgin America. It's me, Casey Stewart, your Toronto provocateur. And I'm taking you on quite an art venture tonight. We're in the great city of Toronto, and it's all-night contemporary art thing called Nuit Blanche. In social marketing today, it's people like Casey that drive things. Casey actually helped us a lot out in the, in the beginning. 
and because uh, she had a couple of clients and she was running with the platform and a big thing for us at Pinpoint Social is the analytics around sharing. It was actually pretty crazy to see how in promotions and campaigns for brands there's very small percentage of people that truly drive the impact and wherever we see Casey in it, there's just explosion you see in the campaign data. We were actually working on an app at the working group and somebody recommended I ask Casey for her opinion on it because it was a social app about video and sharing, kind of like chat roulette. So I found her through Twitter and asked her if she'd go for a coffee and kind of told her about the idea. And she was so enthusiastic, I remember her like pulled out her little notebook on her iPad and actually started sketching with her hand like how she thought it would make sense. So it was really cool to have the opinion of somebody that really understood social and kind of how people actually interact and share on the net. The whole part of what people love following me and my content is because I'm kind of random and funny and sometimes I do things that are cute. I have so many apps on my phone. I have this one that's like a destruction app where you can like send missiles into stuff. It was a beautiful day in the city of Toronto, but little did they know danger was about to strike. A massive bolt crushed Toronto Island. Okay, this never really happened, but this is my real voice. And then I share that, and to me, that was really funny. But all these apps have really, really helped enhance my content sharing. I have this one that's like from Japan that puts these little like Harajuku hearts on things and on a picture that, you know, is kind of silly, but it makes it cute. It makes the content that just is like a normal picture. And then I put a filter on it. And then I put a little heart or a cat face. And then I put that to Tumblr, and then that goes to Twitter. And then we talk about it on Facebook because we commented through something. So all these apps are going, are integrated through maybe it's just one photo. Every once in a while, I, I have doubts, and I think, what am I doing? You know, what, what is this, and where am I going, and where, where am I going to be in five years? Um, and I try to, you know, not let those doubts, you know, hold me back or anything, and I just be positive and take a couple deep breaths, and a nap usually helps. Hey, Casey, this is my lurker. So I do all kinds of like hosting events that involve social media um, because of my profile that it's gotten kind of uh, big and I've worked with a lot of big companies that people now hire me to like, host things. We live in a world now that there's so many new jobs like the job that I got at CTV when I ran their social media it didn't exist five years ago. There was no Twitter. So it, you know, it's like where do you want to be in five years? Who knows? But if you're following your dreams, that will you will always be able to be true to that. A couple years ago when I was asked by someone that was, you know, older than me and kind of traditional in that sense to helping people, you know, sort out their career, and they said, well, Casey, what do you really want to do? And I said, well, I want to be a brand. I was just launching my website and I want to build this. And I said, you know, kind of like Paris Hilton, but not. And they said, well, that's going to be really hard for you, Casey, because you don't come from a family like that. And I thought, stuff you. I was like, I can do that. And I, I think I've worked really hard and that was about five years ago and now I'm doing that. So I think hopefully I can be an inspiration to other people that don't let anyone stand in your way. If you want to do something, you can. You know, I'm under 30, I'm debt free and I'm living my dream and this is my life. <laughs>